All right, everybody. I'm going to begin the event. Um, just wanted to start off with a couple of housekeeping items. So for one, the camera is optional, but we would love to see you all and be in community with you all. So if you don't mind turning on that camera, by all means, please do. Once again, completely optional. Um, this event will also be recorded. Um, if you can, please do mute your mic during the session. Um, also, if you haven't already or you need to make adjustments, perfectly fine. Just make sure that your name within the Zoom is the same as your registration name. Um, the event satisfaction survey and PDU will be reported at the end of the event as well. And also feel free to add your LinkedIn profile as well at the bottom. Oh, I mean at the bottom in, within the chat so that way we can all meet and connect with each other outside of this event as well, too. Um, we'd love to get to meet you, meet and speak with you all outside of this event. Upcoming chapter events we have coming up uh, on the 18th, we have PMI on air live stream event with Janelle Frontone, uh, VP and Chief Information Officer at Memorial Health. So that'd be really good. On the 19th, we have the March new member orientation with Pamela. Um, on the 9th, we have the Art of Pivot, a project manager blueprint for career transition and work-life balance with Allison Hooks. 16th, we have another new member orientation with Pamela again. Um, on the 15th, we have a Lunch and Learn with Philip Marshall um, titled Agile All Around Us. And then on the 30th, we have an evening uh, meeting called Pivot um, using iterative adaptive techniques to solve complex problems with Alan Zunker. So by all means, if you want to connect and keep up with these events, please use the QR code right there to your right. Um, I'll take a quick second to let you all do that if you wish to. Perfect. Uh, next up is the PMICIC bylaws vote reminder. So all chapter members are encouraged to review and vote on the proposal to change our chapter bylaws. Please make sure to check your inbox or your email um, to send in your ballot. Uh, the voting site will close tomorrow. So please be on the lookout for that if you haven't already uh, voted as well. Uh, job opportunity here. Um, Lincoln Land College is hi hiring an IT project manager. Um, looking for someone detail oriented, highly organized uh, to fit the role. Um, if you have any prior man project management experience and are interested, it will close on the 17th. Um, so I will uh, take a second here as well, too, for if anyone is interested um, to copy that link down um, below as well. So I'll take a second. Moving on. Uh, keep an eye out for some new openings we got. Coming up, we have the financial auditor. Uh, the main responsibility of the auditor is to audit, obviously. No, I'm kidding. Uh, is to audit, audit the chapters, accounting records, and financial statements. So if you are interested, please send an email to Karen um, at VP of Finance at PMICIC.org. Uh, also below there is another QR code as well. I'll take a second as well for if anyone is interested to highlight and uh, use that as well. And next up, uh, once again, um, become a chapter ambassador. Give us a hand by getting in front of organizations you care about, including your employers. Um, so if you have any sponsors that you can think of that you think um, would be great for us to use, please feel free to contact us at VP underscore publicity at PMICIC.org. And lastly, uh, just connect on social medias. We have our Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, X slash Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Threads, and YouTube as well. So please take your time. If you want to follow us on any of these platforms, please take your time to do so as well, too. Um, I'll hang this up for about 30 more seconds. Perfect, perfect. Um, and now... I will highlight the main attraction of this event. Um, Cindy, give me one moment. Sorry about that, you all. Give me one moment. Sorry, you all. Having a technical issue on my end. Perfect. 
So a dynamic speaker and kindness advocate, Cindy has transformed her personal resilience and professional expertise into a powerful mission to inspire positive change in both individuals and corporations. With over two decades of experience in sales, marketing, and organizational communication, she merges heartfelt personal narratives with data champion kindness as a cornerstone of personal achievement and corporate success. Through compelling presentations, Cindy not only demonstrates the undeniable link between kindness and enhanced business performance, but provides actionable strategies for embedding kindness into the fabric of organizational life to drive innovation, employee engagement, and customer satisfaction. Um, Cindy, it's a pleasure to welcome you and be in your presence. I will let you take the floor. Hi, thank you so much, everybody. Welcome this evening. I will share my screen and we will get started. Can everybody see that? Yeah, we can see. All right, great. Well, I'm hoping uh, tonight uh, that this is a little interactive. Um, I will be asking some questions and hoping you will have some feedback for me um, so that we're just not staring at a blank uh, or, or computer screen right into our cameras, um, but have some uh, good conversation going on. Uh, again, my name is Cindy Rowe and I love talking about kindness and how it relates in our workplace. Um, and my first question for you to get started tonight is in the comments, tell me, or in the chat box, tell me if you've been a recipient of a random act of kindness. And if you want, you can tell me or share with me what that random act was. Don't be shy. Um, I, um, went to get some breakfast earlier and the person in front of me had paid for it. So that was pretty good. Like pay it for kind of thing. So it was pretty good. I was full and the meal was good. <laughs> That's awesome. I think the, when I, when I asked this question, um, most people share like a Starbucks experience where, you know, they're in the line for Starbucks and they receive something, um, you know, the pay it forward and it keeps continuing on. So that is definitely, um, one of the most popular, but I want you to think of if, if you did not think that you were a recipient of a random act of kindness, I want you to think about the small things, right? Having somebody greet you with a warm hello, um, holding open the door. How about letting you in in traffic? Those are all random acts of kindness. And we don't think about that. But when you've been a recipient of these random acts of kindness, did you feel compelled to pay it forward, to pass it on? I'm guessing you did. <laughs> I see some in, in the comments. Thank you so much for participating. I received a pay it forward once. That's awesome. Yes. So typically when we receive a random act of kindness, we want to pay it forward. And they've done research that shows that we don't do it to the person that gave us uh, the, the act of kindness. We pay it to somebody else. And I stumbled across the coolest research um, or study from Harvard and Yale, and they found out that one kind act has the potential to reach 125 people in just one day. Now, when I found this, uh, this like blew my mind. I was like, I, I, well, you think about it, right? And if you guys know the, the Kevin Bacon, the seven degrees or six degrees or whatever it is, degrees of Kevin Bacon, and um, you know, if you don't know him, somebody in your circle knows him, right? Well, this is the same thing with the random act of kindness. What happens is when we see a random act of kindness or we are a recipient of one, we pay it forward. It's contagious. And we've always heard that, you know, kindness is contagious. Well, it truly is. And Harvard and Yale figured this out. This study does not um, take into account uh, anything through social media. So, I don't know about you, but I like taking selfies and posting them on Instagram. I'm one of those crazy, silly people, 
But if I were to get um, a free Starbucks, chances are I'm going to take my phone, snap a picture with me and my Starbs and say, oh my gosh, somebody bought me a coffee today. And you never know how many more people will feel like um, they want to pass it on or, or do something kind for somebody else. This study only uh, could count for the person that received the random act of kindness, the person that did the random act of kindness, and anybody that witnessed it. So I really think the 125 could actually be a little bit, bit higher. And this really excites me. I think that when we understand the true value of what a kind act can do for us, we might be more apt to do them. So I call this the 31 days that changed my life. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my story and why I am qualified to be here tonight talking to you about kindness and how it relates to your job. Um, but if you want to travel back about nine years uh, ago, I was in a really dark place and um, my life was picture perfect on the outside. I was married to my high school sweetheart. I had a dream job. I was the vice president of marketing for um, a financial institution. I had, a, we built a home um, and we had two healthy children. So really on the outside, everything looked great, but inside it was a mess. I absolutely hated my job. I, my marriage was struggling. Um, I just was feeling like I didn't have an impact on anybody's life. And at the same time where I was feeling a little down and out, I started uh, with a direct sales company and they had a sales system where they said, you read 10 pages of a good book a day. Back then, I was reading Nicholas Sparks novels, and he published one book a year, and it took me the entire year to read it. So I wasn't really a reader, <laughs> but I'm a rule follower, and I really wanted to succeed at this business. So I, I started reading. And these were personal development books, professional development books, self-help books, uh, not Nicholas Sparks novels. <laughs> but I started reading and I could feel things shift a little bit on the inside, but I couldn't connect the dots from what I was reading to how to apply it to my life. Um, again, not the end of the world type of things. Uh, in fact, what I've experienced in, since then has been much worse <laughs> than where my life was at then, but I couldn't see out. And I know some of us have felt that where, you know, we might be having a bad day that turns into a bad week that turns into a bad month and we just can't dig ourselves out. We don't know where to go. Um, I was like that, but this was months and I, I didn't know exactly what to do. I thought I tried everything. Um, I ended up leaning on a friend who was in this direct sales company with me. And I was like, you know, my life sucks. Like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to change my situation. And he suggested I do a random act of kindness. And I'm, I laughed and I'm pretty sure I rolled my eyes. Like, what is a random act of kindness going to do for my situation? And he said, easy. If you do something kind for somebody else, it actually lessens the troubles you feel. And I was like, okay. Again, I was ready and open for anything to help me get out of this dark, dark space. So I did a random act of kindness. And it was about the third random act of kindness that I did that I could feel a shift. Um, I felt differently, uh, a little bit lighter. I kind of had a little pep in my step. Now my troubles didn't go away, but I, I started to view my life a little bit differently. My perspective changed. And I thought there's something to this. Now I was approaching a milestone birthday. Um, and I'm like, you know, why don't I do a random act of kindness every day for my birthday month? 
Well, my birthday is on Halloween. I got a really cool birthday, at least when I was little, it was really cool. Um, and I decided, you know, since there's 31 days, then I was going to do 31 days of birthday kindness. And these things were anywhere from, you know, painting rocks and leaving them on my walk with my dog in the park. Uh, I would leave quarters in the carts at Aldi's. Um, one of my favorites in, in the in this picture, I'm holding some roses. Um, I will buy roses and deliver them to um, an elderly nursing home. Um, and I would ask the receptionist just to give them to somebody that hasn't had a visitor in a while because they always know who doesn't get seen um, or somebody that was celebrating a birthday as well. I'd buy a scratch off lottery ticket and tape it to the gas pump when I filled up my car. So these were little things. Again, buying Starbucks, um, writing uh, reviews for small businesses. I'm a small business owner, so I love any review that I can get. So I, I usually pick five of my uh, local businesses and write a, a, a really good review for them. Um, so again, little things. But I was busy, right? And I'm not suggesting that everybody should take their birthday month and turn it into, you know, random acts of kindness. But this was something that I just felt compelled to do. The person that I was on October 1st to the person that I became on October 31st, they were two different people. Cindy on October 1st was bitter, angry, not fun to be around. Fast forward to my 40th birthday on October 31st, that Cindy was happy, lighthearted, really fun to be around. And there was this shift in me. And it wasn't until a few weeks later that I really felt like this was something. Um, and it wasn't I like it was during actually, so this was nine years ago when I first did this. Uh, now you guys know how old I am. I just gave that up. Uh, <laughs> but they, I, it wasn't until COVID um, where I, I think a lot of us kind of reflected back on our lives um, that I realized that that activity that I did for my 40th birthday really did change my life. And if I fast forward a few years from then, I ended up leaving my job um, and starting my own business. And I built my business with not only integrity, but the foundation of kindness. I have a core value of kindness. And in fact, I would say probably within the last year or two, it's become a mindset of kindness. Um, I ended up... Uh, getting a divorce and starting my business. And it really did um, start this change within me. And what I realized, what I realized from this activity for, for, you know, 31 days of kindness, that kindness has a ripple effect and it starts with you. Now, Again, I'm not suggesting that you do, you have to do a whole month, um, but it did spark a change in me. And as I started to dig into really the effects of kindness, I got really excited. And I, that's why I'm here today to share it with you. And I share it with organizations and businesses and schools. Uh, next week, I'm doing a school assembly. So I, it just really fires me up because I think when we hear the word kindness, we sometimes think about soft and weak and a pushover, especially in the workplace. And it's definitely not any of those. I um, shared a little bit of my story, but now I want to know what your definition of kindness is. So this is where you're going to type in the chat box. <laughs> now, I would love some participation. It could be a one word, it could be a feeling, it could be a complete definition, but 
uh, if you want to drop it in the the chat box um, and let me know what your definition of kindness is. I will share mine um, in, in just a minute. Words of affirmation, being thoughtful and honest, kind words and action, patience, absolutely. Being kind to others without uh, expecting something in return. Giving credit, making someone smile, paying attention to the other person's needs in the moment. Loving where they when they are not lovable. Yes, absolutely. Um, that was me. Um, I love this. This is great. Giving grace to others, intentional actions to make somebody smile. I love that. Showing empathy. Make a difference for someone who doesn't expect it. Calm and respectful to others. You guys are good. This is great. All right. So I'm going to share my definition. And I think it actually encompasses everything what you guys said. So um, my definition is a commitment in thought, word, and action to leave everyone and everything better. Right? Because it's what we think. It's our words and it's our actions that really show and prove to people that we are a kind human. So I did a little digging and I found out that um, these are your top problem areas for project managers. So, um, I mean, maybe you can give me a head nod if you agree or not agree, yes, no in the chat box, but Poorly defined management controls, insufficient work definition, unrealistic schedules, underestimated cost. I mean, especially with the way things are changing so rapidly, um, inadequate cost controls, right? So I also found out, and this was not surprising to me, um, that poor communication is why most projects fail. Are we in agreement to that? So this was actually a study found uh, by Forbes. Um, what does the poor communication encompass? That's ineffective communication, miscommunication, communication, and lack of. So these can all derail your project. And I'm going to show you, hopefully by the end, on how kindness can have an impact on some of these areas. So we all know that good communication starts when your project kicks off. I found these incredible stats. I thought I'd share them with you. 29% of projects fail due to poor communication. 32% of man managers believe communication is the biggest issue of project management. And 10% of every dollar is wasted due to poor performance. By fostering a culture of kindness and collaboration, Businesses can harness the collective strengths of their employees. Here's some more stats. 87% of organizations cite culture and engagement as one of their top challenges. Disengaged employees cost the economy up to $350 billion per year in lost productivity. And the number one reason people quit their job is not money. It's because they don't feel appreciated. Are you with me? Does this like, are you like, wow, yes, I know this because this is what I'm dealing with in my everyday, right? Um, I believe this is why we need to make that shift uh, to more kindness in the workplace because it can make a significant difference. I'm hoping by the end of tonight, you realize that it pays to be kind in the workplace. Again, it's not about being soft or weak or someone that you're not. It's truly about the idea that we're all working with other humans and each interaction that we have matters and it makes a difference. So what if you had uh, project kindness within your organization? 
Do you think that a uh, culture of kindness can be a solution for uh, your team? It's backed by research. 93% of employees would stay with a kind employer or boss. Employees would take a kinder boss over a 10% raise. Again, a lot of the times it isn't even about the money, it's how they're being treated. And organizations that focus on a kindness culture retain employees eight to 10 times more than organizations that don't. This got me really excited when I started to take my story and, and think about everything that I've done with the kindness and how I can relate that to my work life. And it's what do, how can we connect those two dots, right? Being a kind human in our normal everyday life, how does that translate to being a kind human in our work life and what are the impacts that it has? Now, I'm pretty sure if you're like me, most people, most companies don't talk about kindness as a driver for efficiency, for profit margins, or productivity. We've never heard of that, right? But with today's fast-paced work environment, competitive work environment, that we're all under all this pressure to perform, we prioritize those things more than anything else. But we overlook a powerful tool that can enhance employee satisfaction, boost morale, and um, improve the bottom line. Any guesses what that is? That's kindness. So when people are um, motivated and perform better, they, uh, when they, when they feel valued, they are actually, they perform better and they're more mo motivated. And there's been studies that show that being kind makes us happy, which is actually what I found through my little experiment. But Warwick University took it a little bit further. And they found that happier people are 12% more productive. So kind equals happy equals more productive. I think that's pretty exciting. So there's also been studies that show that when you do a kind act, our cortisol and our um, dopamine levels, they uh, the dopamine levels increase. And when that happens, this uh, we all feel like, um, well, those those hormones are the happy hormones. So the, the dopamine, so that makes us really happy. But when that happens, our teams are more productive, they're more creative, they're healthier, which could result in better outcomes and a more successful project, right? I have a question for you. Is your organization a place of kindness and respect? Now, you don't have to write it in the comments or the chat box, but just think about that. Um, normally, when I ask that question, I do get a few head nods, yes, and then I get a, mm, it depends on the day. <laughs> but there is more research that backs up why kindness and respect belong in the workplace. And I sure hope you have respect in, in your workplace. Um, and of course, kindness too, but I think we're, we're starting to open up our minds a little bit more about having the kindness aspect in the workplace. What I found was companies and organizations that include a, uh, kindness into their culture, they experience reduced burnout. It boosts productivity, which I already talked about. It increases your energy. It lightens the mood increases happiness, which again, I also talked about, and there's more. It forges strong team relationships. It builds trust. It builds positive connections. It increases engagement and it lowers stress. So these are really exciting things. Uh, when I stumbled across that, like kindness 
can be free. It does not have to be uh, this big elaborate program. What does have to happen is it has to flow from the top down, right? It has to start with somebody and it might just be you. So more research that I found is that when these, uh, the impacts on employees, when there's a kindness culture in place, employees have 26% more energy, 36% more satisfaction in their work, and 44% more commitment to the organization. How would that impact your team? How would that impact your workplace environment? there really is no downside to adding kindness, right? Like, and I, I say this because I think we all want to believe that we are kind, that we're kind humans. But when we are stressed, when we are overworked, when we are tight on deadlines, what happens? We forget to be kind. And it's not because we are trying to be rude on purpose, right? It just happens, right? We are overstressed, overworked, you know, trying not to miss a deadline, keeping this project going on the right path. So when something bad happens or maybe an employee team member doesn't show up, or makes a big mistake, you know, how can you approach that situation with kindness? And I get this a lot, right? Our natural human instinct when we have a conflict or um, when we have somebody coming at us, right, with disrespect is to give it right back to them. But if you were to be able to step back Maybe take a deep breath, breathe, and then approach the situation with kindness, respect, empathy. I guarantee you the situation will turn out quite differently. So I have another little activity for you, um, or I want your input. What does kindness look like at work? I'm going to share just a quick story. When I was working for the financial institution, um, I worked very closely with the CFO and the CEO. And one day I had this really good idea, or what I thought was a good idea. And I, I worked uh, next to the CFO's office. So I walked into his office. I'm like, hey, Don, do you have a minute? And he's like, yeah. And he keeps typing and he doesn't look up. And so I share my idea with him. He's still typing and he's like, yeah, uh -huh. and I was like, okay. So I walk back into my office thinking to myself, oh, maybe that wasn't a really good idea after all, but whatever. I put it out there. Later on, uh, we're sitting in the CEO's office I don't remember or recall what we were talking about, but Don says to the CEO, hey, Duff, I got this really good idea. And he shared my idea. And he actually added on to it, which made it an even better idea, but he never gave me credit for my idea. He basically threw me under the bus. And it was at that point, point that I realized that I was not going to stay in this uh, organization. I was actually looking for a way out. Um, but he, the CFO was going to be replacing the CEO when he retired. So I'm like, I am never working for this guy. Um, and that, like, I drew the line in the sand there. So that's what I'm looking like for um, when I'm asking this question. What does kindness look like at work? I want acts or situations, not actually acts. So not bringing donuts. I want you to really think about it. You know, giving credit where credit is due. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to give you a minute or so 
and I'm going to take a drink of water and then I'll see what you have. And then I have a list that I'm going to share with you. Um, and because I want to open up your eyes, I want you to think a little bit bigger than just kind acts. What does kindness really look like at work? So I look forward to seeing what you've got in the, the chat. This is great. You guys are good. Giving grace, being generous with your time to help others, being respectful, listening to others, hearing them, their input, treating others as you'd want to be treated, being helpful when you see someone struggling, good, allowing people to be their authentic self, great. Helping and teaching, absolutely. Helping someone with a task that is difficult or you can tell they are struggling. That's great, I like that. Really listening, truly paying attention to the conversation. Lori, I am right there with you. I have had, um, I, I've been really trying to focus on active listening um, the last two years, because it is really a true skill. And sometimes I just really suck at it and I have to catch myself. So I like that because it really does, it really does make a difference when you can be present and really focusing on that conversation. Even a small hello or a good morning. Yes. Beyond listening, acting to assist others with their plight. Mm hmm. I like that. Being sure someone is included that might not be invited to the conversation. Yes, that's great. Do you do you know? I'm gonna um, comment on that, and then I'm gonna share my list. I when I um, go into the schools, I always learn so much. And um, the first time I was with these. I think they were fourth or fifth graders. I asked them what kindness meant to them. And all of them said, including others. And if we see, you know, Sally sitting by herself, we'll go sit with her or invite her over. And I was like, wow, this is so great. Like, but as adults, we need to do this too. Like, I feel like there's such a disconnect when we get into the professional world. I know I go to a lot of networking events and it's often where the groups of people just find each other, right? And then you've got a new person and they were brave enough to come and nobody says hello or includes them into the conversation. So I really do like that. Um, so I'm going to share my list. You guys have rocked it out of the park. I, I need this list. I might have to add them to mine. This is great. Thank you so much for sharing. This is what the list that I've accumulated, um, pushing back an idea that you don't agree with, right? I think that is really important in the workplace. Speaking up when voices aren't being heard, also very important. Honest, direct, and tough feedback. Really, truly important especially in a management leadership role. I had to put mine on there, giving credit where credit is due, listening without interrupting, treating others with respect, valuing the views of others, even when it's not the same as yours, right? And that's what makes workplaces and teams so great is because we have, you know, uh, views of everybody and we can come up with such great solutions, right? Communicating with a personal touch, accommodating personal issues and fostering a sense of inclusion. 
Um, yeah, you guys have some really great ones. <laughs> Julie, having chocolate or candy on your desk. Always, you have to do that. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for sharing and, and being, um, you know, really interactive with us. This is great. So I hope you can see that kindness could be your secret weapon. For me, I say it's my competitive advantage. I have been very intentional with kindness for the last nine years, um, sharing a little bit more about my story. So I did that uh, 31 days of birthday kindness for my 40th birthday, and I've been doing it every October since. Um, so this year I have a big one coming up and I'm hoping to make it even more grand than I've done the last nine years. But after I did the first 31 days of birthday kindness, I like could feel myself kind of going back downhill. And I was like, man, I, I don't have it in me to continually do these big things. Cause I had to plan it all out, whatever. And I'm like, how can I keep, you know, flexing my kindness muscle per se? Uh, so I decided on make a difference Mondays and, um, I, choose Monday because it's the first day of the work week and it can really set the tone. And so every Monday, I'm just very intentional about doing a kind act. Now, I hope I, I'm kind every day and I hope that you are kind every day, but by being very intentional with a random act of kindness on Mondays, I really am able to kind of stay in the zone per se and keep it on top of my mind. Now, if you ask my family, <laughs> I'm not always kind to them and I'm working on this. Um, I feel like it's much easier to uh, be kind to a stranger than to your family. Um, and even after nine years of being intentional with kindness, I'm still not perfect, right? Because I'm human and emotions get in the way. I'm a very emotional person, um, but it still is such a core value for me. And I'm a much better person today than I was nine years ago. And I'm really grateful for that. And, and over the last couple of years is when I realized that it's more of a mindset than anything. So Maybe kindness could be your secret weapon. <clears throat> I found this uh, quote and I thought it was great to share. Most successful projects are led by those who recognize that kindness is not a weakness, but a strategic advantage that creates a motivated and dedicated team. So before you can change the culture of your team or your organization, you have to display that culture, right? You have to decide that kindness is important to you and you're going to uh, push it out uh, in your work environment. It really does start from the top down because behavior drives culture. I have an example. Um, one of my early uh, positions um, in my adult life, I worked at a convention and visitors bureau and our CEO was a huge Disney fan. Like she loved anything Disney and she would go to Disney world. And you know, those, um, hard plastic character figurines like Donald and, uh, Mickey, she would have hundreds of them on her window sill. And she put this out to us and it was a very small office. We maybe had 10 employees, maybe. Uh, we had some part-timers and some interns. So I think there was about 10 of us total. But what she wanted us to do is if we heard of somebody going above and beyond, if we saw something amazing, we were to award one of these figurines to our coworker, but we couldn't let them know that we put it there on their desk. So 
you would come to work or come back from lunch and you would have a Disney figurine and you would kind of like, oh, you know, you like feel seen and feel heard, right? Like somebody saw me do a good deed. Um, and it, it was typically when we like maybe we're working with a, a customer or a partner um, or even a coworker. Uh, and so it was really cool. And then she said, it's your job not to keep that figurine. You need to pay it forward. So this was, oh my goodness, I'm really dating myself because I was pregnant with my daughter. So this was... <laughs> This was like 20 years ago, 21 years ago, where she had this idea. And I, I just really think she was really ahead of her time. And we all understood what these little Disney characters meant. And she had us giving each other pats on the back because we all knew what they meant. And we all were looking out for those wins for our coworkers. And I just think that was the kind of culture she was trying to build. We were such a strong team and we did a lot of work for the little team that we were. And I think it had to do with those Disney characters. Um, so she was is my perfect example of how the behavior drives culture. So what does it take to be a kind leader? So it starts from the top, um, but I've, over the last couple of years, have developed what I call the six C's of kind leaders. And here they are. Clarity, candor, consistency, compassion, courage, and communicate. So clarity. Your team knows their goals and their responsibilities. Um, what I like about this or what I like to explain a little bit more about this C mm -hmm. is that when a team member is hired on, they're given their job responsibilities, but they may not understand how their specific job impacts the bigger picture. And if we can, as their leader or their manager, help them understand how they fit into the overall picture, I think things work out so much better and they get excited about maybe some of the mundane tasks or they they understand that there is an impact, like it, it, it drives up, right? Candor, direct, open, honest communication. That is part of a kind leader. I get this quite often that people don't want to be seen as a pushover. And if they're kind, they're going to be a pushover. And that is absolutely not the case. That's a nice leader, right? We don't want a nice leader. We want a kind leader. And that is somebody that's going to be open. When somebody messes up on your team, right? Because we're human, right? It's best if we could be that kind leader and share with them exactly what went wrong and how they can fix it for the future, right? So as a kind leader, you are trying to make them better. And you can only do that is if you give them the proper feedback instead of like glossing over it or sugarcoating it, that would be a nice leader. Consistency. Actions speak louder than words. If you are claiming that you're going to be a kind leader, you got to show up and be kind all the time. You know, you have to be consistent with that. People need to see your actions. Compassion. Um, walk in their shoes, in their shoes attitude, right? We know as humans, we are not perfect. And Nine times out of 10, when somebody messes up, it has nothing to do with you. It's something else that's happening. And so if we can be uh, a compassionate leader and really think about that, like what else is going on in their world? Are they overwhelmed at home and can't 
you know, really focus here at work? Are they way in over their heads with some of the stuff that they've, you know, taken on at work? Is there something that we can help them with? Do they need more training? Do they need um, a little bit more extra time? What is going on? So putting yourself in their shoes instead of just, you know, nope, we've got to go move on. Let's go. You know, really having compassion for that person. Courage. Sometimes being kind is not the easy thing to do. Again, when I was talking about when you have somebody very angry, maybe in your face, yelling at you, um, it's really hard and it takes a lot of courage to not give it back. And as a kind leader, you have to get into the practice of maybe stepping back, maybe even stepping away for a minute, breathing, <laughs> pausing, and coming back uh, to the situation in a moment or minutes or maybe an hour later and approaching it. Um, but it does take courage to, to not uh, blow up basically. Um, and so I think that's another uh, aspect of being a kind leader is having courage. And then finally communicate. And I think during the COVID time, right, we over communicated. We were communicating hourly about the situation because we had to, because everything was so fluid. Don't stop that. Like over communicate with your team, keep the team informed on as much as possible and find out the best way to communicate with them too. Those are my six C's of kind leadership. And I, I, I hope that it resonates with you and you can kind of see, you know, a little bit of you in that as well. And maybe you see where you need to uh, improve and, and grow. Found this uh, through a leadership study. An unkind leader has a one in 2000 chance of also being effective. <laughs> a little fun, fun fact. Project managers who prioritize kindness understand that they are not just managing projects, but also the people behind those projects. And that's why kindness really does matter because we're, at the end, we're all working with human beings and we all deserve to be treated with kindness. So when kindness is part of the organization's culture, this is what will happen. So this is kind of wrapping up everything that I've talked about in all those research studies that I found. And if there was one slide that you had to show uh, somebody maybe in a bigger position than you uh, to get a kindness program or culture of kindness put into your organization, the next slide would be it. Kindness culture impacts all of these things. It's known to show better financial performance. It reduces costs, it, more efficiency, increases productivity, higher employee retention, greater contentment, improved morale, higher motivation, higher engagement and participation and a sense of belonging. And this is not just something that I decided to come up with. This is backed by research and studies that when you have a kindness culture, this is what happens. So how do you get started? Well, number one, as I started at the beginning of tonight, you lead by example. It all starts with you, right? You can just decide. The great thing about everything that I'm sharing with you tonight is that you don't need somebody's approval to make this stuff work. And, and to start incorporating it tomorrow. You can just decide that you want to be a kind employee. You want to be a kind leader. You want to be a kind manager. You are going to show up tomorrow with a, just a slightly different attitude, right? With kindness in the forefront. I also say foster a sense of community. How can you bring the community together? How can you bring your team together. Now, if you've got people still working remotely, you know, how can you make them feel part of the team? Think of dif different ways to get them together as the team. Um, encourage communication and feedback. 
again, starting from the beginning when I shared that communication is the most or the top reason that projects fail, right? So how can we encourage communication? And feedback, if you are giving feedback, you better be open to receiving it without you know, penalizing the person telling you the feedback. You really need to be able to give it both ways. Evaluate and check in. Now, I'm not talking about how are we doing on that project? What are the deadlines? What's the, you know, I'm asking you to really check in with your team members. Hey, how are you doing? How is the family? You know, I, I know you went on vacation. How was it? You know, really connecting that way will make a huge huge change in the way your team sees you. Celebrate successes. I um, share well, with people that all you need is a pad of sticky notes and a marker to celebrate success. Great job. Slap it on their desk. You were amazing today. Slap it on their desk. You know, kudos, slap it on their desk. Like this is all you need really to do to celebrate successes. I also like in leadership roles to make sure you understand how people want to be celebrated. I love all the fanfare. You know, I'm a speaker for a reason. I like to be the center of attention, but not everybody does. People might feel embarrassed or they might you know, if it's not done how they really want it to be done, it, it makes it really challenging, you know, so finding out how people want to be celebrated, is it just a, a, a sticky note? Is it uh, in front of their peers? Is it uh, an email to your boss's boss? Like, what does that look like? What makes, makes them really get excited? Um, and then finally, remember the platinum rule. I used to have um, the golden rule up and I was uh, actually speaking at a nursing conference and one of the nurses in the back uh, yelled out the platinum rule and I had no idea what that was and she shared it with me. So for those of you that have never heard it before, um, the golden rule is do unto others as you and uh, you do on, what do unto others. See, now I get it mixed up. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. The platinum rule is do unto others as they want done unto themselves. So now you're putting them first, right? Just like I talked about with the celebrating successes, like how do they want to be celebrated? What is it that they want? And remembering that. We're wrapping things up and I'm glad that you're still with me today. So we'll have some time for uh um, questions if you have any or comments. I'm always open for that, but I found this too. Kindness is the compass that guides a project manager through rough seas, steering both the team and the project towards success. I like to give everybody a challenge. <laughs> it's a fun one. I want you to do one kind thing for another person today. Now I put my socials on some of the slides like this one. Um, Instagram is Cindy A. Rowe. LinkedIn, you can find me, Cindy Rowe. If you do, and I hope you do, a random act of kindness, I would love to hear about it. If you can message me and just share, I love stories, um, but I would love for you to share what you did and, and maybe how it made you feel. And finally, I just wanna say thank you so much um, I do have a quick survey. So if you found anything that I said today valuable, I would love if you scan that QR code and um, took a couple minutes to fill out the survey. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Um, I need to know because I'm on a mission to get this in front of as many people as I can. So the more I know what resonated with you or what I need to work on, um, the better I can be for future. And um, again, I have all my socials. I also have a kindness apparel line um, that I started 
a couple of years ago with the intention of uh, spreading more kindness. So every purchase from um, my store, I actually do a random act of kindness and then I give you one to do as well. And then I have a podcast, The Kindness Advantage with Cindy Rowe, and you can find that on all your, your podcasting app platforms. So, but I am done for the evening. If you guys have questions or comments, I'm open for those. Thank you very much for this tonight. Was great. This was great. I don't see anything in the chat. Um, if we don't have any questions, I think we're good. We had a very good interaction though. So I think that, let me see one more. Yep, thank you. The thank yous are rolling in. Yep, wonderful. And if you do um, take the the survey, the quick survey, I actually, you receive a free download. It's called Kindness Works Here. And it's just a little um, way to get a kindness program or uh, start your pro kindness program where you work. So something that you can implement uh, on your own. And I told you this too um, before, Cindy, your podcast is very good. Um, it's not long, you know, <laughs> It's just enough to kind of get you what you need, get you the core message, the key message, and you're on your way. I love how you do it. Yeah, I I don't like long podcasts either. So my podcast is 10 minutes or less. And mm -hmm. I share a, a way that you can implement kindness in your personal or professional life. So I really try to stay true to that. <laughs> so check it out, guys. Definitely. <laughs> yep, they love your six your six C's. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Please connect with me on social, stay connected and and continue to be inspired. So you uh, keep flexing that kindness muscle. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> good night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Good night. No